Hello, in this video I want to talk about the purpose of routines and why they are so important to your healing. I'm going to talk about trauma bonds, what a routine does and how it can help you, what's actually going on in your body, how a routine can help you heal and save your sanity. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Goddard from The Divorce Sanctuary and on this channel I talk about healing from emotional abuse and divorcing physically and emotionally from the abuser. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe and if you're returning, thank you so much and welcome back. And thank you so much to all my new subscribers over the last few weeks, it's been amazing. Thank you for your support. So the purpose of routines and why they are so important when you're coming out and healing from an emotionally abusive relationship. So a routine is a sequence of actions that's uh, followed regularly, performed as part of a regular procedure rather than a, for a special reason, and that take place at a certain time. Creating a routine can expedite your healing it can help create a safe environment where your mind and body feel safe and start to reduce the hormones that are surging around your body. So the questions are, are you living in fear and do you still have the trauma bond in place? There are a few telltale signs. You can jump at the slightest sound, frequently second guess your ability to remember details of past events, feel confused and disorientated, feel threatened on edge but you don't know why, can't sleep, you might experience emotional flashbacks or feel like you're constantly overreacting or too sensitive, you feel isolated, hopeless, misunderstood, depressed, you might experience suicidal ideation, during the intense flashbacks, wishing you weren't alive without any serious intent to kill, oversensitivity, fragile self-esteem. You might feel as though you're much weaker or a much weaker version of yourself than you were. These symptoms are common in complex post-traumatic stress to survivors and you might experience some of them or you might experience all of them. The stress responses are being triggered, the four Fs, the fight, flight, fawn, freeze. You might want to run away or you might want to fight. You might want to use language to calm down the situation or you might believe there's no way out and you freeze. The trauma bond needs to be broken. We develop bonds for survival in childhood, usually with our caregiver, who is the foundation of attachment. So when our safety is threatened in some way, we turn to them for support and protection. Trauma bonding is one of the reasons it's so hard to heal from toxic and emotionally abusive relationships. The damage caused puts you in a state of confusion. You had no idea the, the abuse was taking place. The term was actually developed by Patrick Carnes, who describes it as the misuse of fear, excitement, sexual feelings and sexual physiology to entangle another person. Bonding happens in all relationships, but this type of bonding was one-sided and this is why it's so easy for them to walk away as they didn't bond with you. When our safety is threatened in some way, we turn to our tribe for support and protection and these bonds being, can be created within hours. Bonding is a process that makes people more important to each other. We develop bonds for survival and it is the foundation of attachment. This is why team building exercises use scenarios and techniques that help instill trust in each other. Bonds that are made during these activities are unique to the individuals. People who have experienced a traumatic situation together will always have a bond of survival. Bonding is a really strong connection. It strengthens when we spend time with someone, when we make love to them, and when we have our children together. Trauma bonding is used by the emotional abuser or toxic person to enable them to gain power and control. And during the idealization stage, they position themselves as the caregiver showering you with attention, gifts, meals out, days out, manufacturing a love you may never have experienced before. They then started devaluing you with slight put downs and triangulation or gaslighting. 
You may have rationalised their behaviour, believing they cared for you, creating even more bonds. This was the reason you were so connected to them and when the relationship ended, you wondered how you would survive. Trauma bonding made it hard to enforce boundaries, which is why it's so painful to stay away from them. After getting you addicted to oxytocin and dopamine through the love bombing, they started to introduce situations that released the stress hormones, the four Fs, fight, flight, fall and freeze. And this is done by the slight put downs and the creating drama, manufacturing these emotions within you. So when they threatened your safety through their bad behavior, you turn to them for help and protection. You rationalize their behavior, believing they actually cared for you. And this created further bonding, which is the reason you felt so connected. And when the relationship finished, your stress levels are so high, you experience fear. You could never imagine life without them. They, on the other hand, play the victim. And you very likely believe this is all your fault the pain you now feel runs deep into your soul. Being trapped in this bond creates the effects of jumping at the slightest sound. You went into a war zone, but you didn't know that's where you were going. You frequently maybe second guess yourself. Your ability to remember details from past events leaving you powerless. You might feel confused and disorientated. You might feel threatened or living on the edge. You don't know why. You might experience not being able to sleep or adrenal fatigue where you fall asleep at oddest times. And when you go to bed, you lay awake for hours and then you can't, you haven't got the energy to get up in the morning and you are uh, finding yourself that you're, you're falling asleep during the day. You might experience emotional flashbacks of situations or that happened to you that you found yourself in. You feel you're constantly overreacting. You feel isolated. You might feel hopeless, misunderstood, depressed. Loneliness coming out of these types of relationships is huge. The good news is creating routines can give you a sense of security. You walked into a war zone. You were under attack and you didn't realize it. And you need to help calm your body down. And you can introduce small things. Initially, I found this really difficult, putting myself first. I couldn't spend more than a few minutes at a time. And I was experiencing adrenal fatigue. I would fall asleep at work, and when I went to bed, I couldn't sleep until the early hours of the morning. I would then sleep through several alarms at this point and start the process all over again. So if you get a pen and a piece of paper out, create a routine that will give you the safety you need to calm your body down. You have hormones rushing around your body and they are being triggered over and over again. You might find that several routines that run during the day might work better for you. What you're doing is you're actually teaching your body that it's safe. You're teaching it how to relax. You might find meditation in the morning along with some journaling helps you. Or maybe a bath in the evening. Much like you would look after a baby or a toddler, think of ways that work for you that you can introduce into your life that start to tell your body in the evening it's ready for bed and to calm down. And in the morning how to wake up gently. That it's okay to relax for a bit. And over time, you can work through the trauma and reduce the stress hormones that are raging around. Salt baths are absolutely amazing. And if you can, make sure you're grounded or do some grounding exercises continuously through the day. And they help with the stopping of the mind chatter. Deep breathing is also really good, as well as drinking plenty of fresh water. But by creating a routine, you're telling your body you're telling your subconscious that you are safe. So find a pen and a piece of paper and start creating some routines. You can put alerts on your phone. A routine is something practiced over and over again, so it comes naturally. But what I would suggest is having a look at it once a month or once a week and seeing how you can tweak it. It might be that you create something for the morning, for the midday, 
and for the evening you might find grounding exercises work for you every hour trust your intuition do what feels right for you listen to your body i hope you found this useful if you'd like to find out more about working with me you can visit my website put the links below you can also i will also put below the links to both my books finding lily and the a to z of emotional abuse please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel i'm sending you loads and loads and loads of love